Starting with number nine, it tells me to mark the figure with the given information. That means I'm going to be putting tick marks and arc symbols depending on what it tells me here. It tells me that AB, segment AB is congruent. That's what this symbol right here means. Congruent means the same. So segment AB is congruent or the same as segment CD. That means that I will put one tick mark at AB and one tick mark at CD. They need to have the same number of tick marks if they are congruent. This tells me that they are now going to have the same length or the same measure. Then it tells me that angle A is congruent or the same as angle C. So they need to have the same figure marking as well. So angle A, I'll put one arc, and angle C, I'll put one arc. Then it tells me that BD, segment BD, bisects angle ADC. The key word here is bisects, which means cuts in half. So if BD, which is this segment right here, cuts angle ADC in half, that means that half is over here and half is over here. These two must be congruent now. I can no longer use one arc as I already used one arc and that would mean that this angle here is congruent to this angle, so I need to now either put two arcs or an arc with a dash going through it. I'll put two arcs. This now means this angle ADB is congruent to angle BDC. And now that's all the information I was given, and this should be the complete marking. Now if I move on to number 10, it tells me to draw the picture with the following and label it correctly. If it tells me vertical angles, I know that vertical angles, they exist when we have two lines that intersect. So when two lines intersect, that creates vertical angles. Vertical angles are angles that are going to be across from each other and share a common vertex. This is the vertex right here. Right there is the vertex. If they are across from each other, those are going to symbolize the vertical, the vertical angles. Vertical angles will be congruent to each other because if I were to tell you that this was a straight line and a straight line measures 180 degrees and I told you that this angle right here was 80 degrees, that means this angle must be 100. And if this angle is 100, and we have a straight line right here that equals 180, and we said that this was 100, then this must be 80, meaning both of these vertical angles are 80. Since they're the same measure, they are congruent. So now I've got my congruent vertical angles, and I just need to label them appropriately. They both share Q being that middle letter, which is going to be the vertex. They both share that vertex, so we can already put Q right here. Now if I'm labeling this angle right here, that's going to be angle PQR. So I can put P anywhere over here and R anywhere over here. This angle will be WQA, so I can put W anywhere over here and A anywhere over here. So I can follow it and make sure that everything lines up. For B, it says perpendicular segments AK and ZM. So when we're talking about perpendicular segments, perpendicular is the key word here. Perpendicular is when two segments, lines, or um, rays come together and create right angles. They tell me they're perpendicular segments. So this means I will have two segments that create a right angle. Notice that AK and ZM do not share any um, vertex. So that means that they are not going to both share this guy right here. So I can call this one A and this one K, this one Z, and this one M. Now in order for me to show that they are perpendicular, they must have a right angle. So I'll put a right angle here. If this is a right angle, that means this one must be, which means this one must be, and this one must be. So one is good enough. 
Going on to number C, or I'm sorry, the letter C. Complementary angles three and four. Complementary, remember, is when um, two angles add up to be 90 degrees. So I'm going to start by drawing a 90 degree angle. How can I show that it's a 90 degree angle? By making sure I include the little box. Then from there, I need two angles that when I add them together is going to give me this 90. So I can draw a line like this. So then now I've broken down my angle. It doesn't need to be bisect, it doesn't need to be right down the middle, anywhere. So now I can say this is angle three and this is angle four. Lastly, a linear pair, linear meaning a line and a pair of angles that make a line. So I'm going to have a line and now I just need to have two angles that when I add them together is gonna to give me this 180 degrees. So anywhere that I put, now I have an angle here plus this angle here will give me this 180 degrees. So I can put a one here and a two here. You could have put in the one on this side, the two on this side, and it doesn't matter where that line is as long as you have a straight line and then two angles that create it.